It's December 22nd, and I am very concerned about the situation with Social Security. So concerned that I decided to seek help to find out what we could do to improve the Social Security situation. And the helpmates that I went to, which was BARD, which is Google's AI situation, and Copilot which is Microsoft's AI situation. And so I asked them the question, what can we do to save Social Security? And the answers I got were the standard answers. And that bothered me. And I'll tell you what they were in a few seconds. It bothered me because they did not think outside the box, so to speak. There was no real creative answer. They gave me the facts that I know for sure. But they didn't give me any real substantial solution that I could hang my hat on. Nothing new came out of my question. So let me tell you what their answers were, and then, and then I'll tell you what I think could be done. So God comes back to me, and he tells me that Americans are willing to make several changes to fix Social Security. And I think Americans are willing to make many changes to fix Social Security. But they are including raising the Social Security payroll tax, reducing benefits for high earners, and adopting a more accurate measure of inflation for cost of living adjustment. Now, I don't disagree with any of these things, but I think when it comes to making cost of living adjustments, now what are we going to do? Change every six months when the cost of living swings one way or the other? I don't think that makes much sense. And most of you know that the cap for Social Security taxes right now is about $168,000. And in all of these proposals, they're suggesting that we do away with the cap and then you pay Social Security taxes on every dollar you earn. I'm in favor of that. There's no question about that. There are many people who would probably object to that. But if I'm earning a good salary and I'm all set for life, why do I necessarily want to pay additional Social Security tax? I don't know, but I think that's a good idea. That shouldn't even be an issue. That has to be in there. But that is not a major, major step yet. I mean, right now that looks like a major step, but I think we can do better. And there's another proposal that says we should raise the retirement age. We should make it 70 years instead of 65. Now, there are many countries in the world that are surviving on a 62-year-old retirement age. Do we want people to work to 70 or 75 before they start collecting Social Security? Yes, that probably would save a little bit, but that's not the answer that I am looking for. And then there are those that believe that reducing benefits for high earners would be another change. Because they're taking taking a position that you've earned a lot of money in your life and you probably saved enough of it. But that's not. People live right up to the edge of what they earn. There are many stupid people in this country who make a good living but don't save properly. And they are certainly entitled to their Social Security benefit for whatever they paid. So if you're a high earner, you earn the right to get a higher Social Security level. And many people should strive for that. Look, there are many people that take jobs in the government because there's a retirement package that goes with those jobs. But most people don't have retirement packages anymore. They're dependent on 401ks and 519s and whatever else is out there, IRAs. In addition to your Social Security, those are things that are important. So your life depends on the way you are managing your money while you are working. And in my experience as a boss, many people ignore the fact that they're responsible for their future. We had a matching program in my office. 
If you put money into your retirement account, we would match it up to a certain amount of money. And I beg people to put that extra money into the account. But most of them ignored me. Claimed they didn't have enough money to live on. Well, I can tell you that if you save an extra 10%, it's not going to hurt you after a while once you get used to living on that lesser amount. If you put away 10%, you're going to do fine. But that's not the way people think. So I got no real off-the-wall solution from Bard or Copilot. But Copilot did say it's important to note that any changes to Social Security should be considered carefully and implemented gradually with attention to protecting vulnerable populations and ensuring long-term sustainability. Finding solutions will require political courage and open-mindedness. Well, I have open-mindedness, and I have what I think is a great solution. And I probably have told many of you about it before, but I'm going to repeat it right now. The workforce population is declining. And that's due to several reasons, and one of them is the birth rate in this country has gone down. But that hasn't affected us yet, but it will affect us in the future. And so, in the interest maintaining a strong Social Security system, I am suggesting that all workers contribute to the Social Security problem. And that includes robots. I think that any job that has been displaced because the company has taken a robot on to do that and recognize the fact that robots don't go to the bathroom and they don't take vacations and things like that. So why shouldn't companies that use robots to do the work that humans used to do pay into Social Security as if a human was working there. And they could pay in the minimum wage for a human. And that would be wonderful, considering that a robot probably works for two or three humans. So that's what I think would be a major, major step forward if the robot were counted as employees and companies were forced to pay a Social Security contribution for those robots. After all, the company takes the robot, buys it, depreciates that money, so that robot is costing him nothing. And yet, we have people who can't get their Social Security. So I'm in favor of making robots pay for our Social Security in some way, shape, or form. And I think that would be terrific. The other big piece would be to get the government to pay us the $2.6 trillion that they borrowed from our Social Security accounts without asking our permission. So I leave you with that. Have a great day.